Hi everybody. In this video, we're going to examine regular Riemann sums, and in particular, we'll look at left hand, right hand, and midpoint sums. Here's the plan. We shall consider regular Riemann sums, which are simple algorithms for approximating the signed area under the graph of a function. And in particular, we will examine left hand sums, right hand sums, and midpoint sums. We'll discuss properties these sums have in regard to their ability to provide good approximations, and we'll see how all this plays out by looking at one example. So how what might we approximate the area under a graph? So here we have this, this region uh, that lies below the graph of f, above the horizontal axis, and between the arguments a and b, and we want to know what the area is. So what could we do? Well, one possibility is we could split this interval from a to b into equal subintervals. And then we could use the left-hand endpoints in each subinterval, and the way we'll use them is we will sample the function value at each of these arguments, and then using those values as heights, we can create rectangles. So we can take the, the width of each rectangle times the height given by the function value and add that all up. So if you take the total sum of the uh, areas of these rectangles, um, you would get a number, and we'll call that the left-hand sum, a left-hand sum, in this case with five divisions. So we would have a left-hand sum with, in this case, in this picture, five divisions, but you could use any number of divisions, and the rule would just be to chop up the interval equally into however many pieces you wish. We could split the interval into equal subintervals, and of course we could use right-hand endpoints as well to play this game, and when we sample the function value at each of those endpoints, we could come up with rectangles by using those function values as heights. And we could add up these five areas, in this case, uh, these rectangular areas, and we'd come up with a number that we'd call a right-hand sum. And let's look at one other strategy. So we could, this time, take the midpoint of each interval, and we could use the midpoint to sample the function value, and from these function values, create rectangles. Um, and once again, we'll find the sum of these five um, areas, and that's what we could call that number that we get, we could call a midpoint sum. So there are three so-called regular constructions for uh, creating Riemann sums to approximate the area under a curve. And the reason they're called regular is because we are chopping the interval in question we are chopping that interval up into equal subintervals. If you used intervals of unequal length, then you would have an irregular method. Regular methods are quite handy because you can easily program computers and calculators to uh, create these sums. Now let's test drive these methods. Here's uh, a function, uh, f of x equals square root of 4 minus x squared, and we know the graph should be a quarter circle on the interval from 0 to 2. Why do we know that? We can just do a little algebra here. If we call the value y, square both sides, add x squared to both sides, we see we uh, recover the equation of a circle with radius 2 centered at the origin. So, so if we take the positive square root on the interval from 0 to 2, we'll be looking at a quarter circle for the graph of this function. Now, we, we actually know what the area of this quarter circle is exactly. It's a quarter of the area of a circle of radius 2, so it's pi on the nose. We know this area is pi, and so we're going to use that to test drive these methods of approximating the area, and we can compare it with pi and figure out how these methods do. So let's take a left-hand sum with 10 divisions. Chop the interval from 0 to 2 into 10 divisions. We'll notice that the common width of each interval is 2 divided by 10 equals 0 0.2. And we will use left-hand endpoints. So here are those left-hand endpoints from 0 to 1.8. And we'll use those to find function values. And then we will take the product of these two columns. And that'll give us the area of each of these 10 boxes. And add that all up, we get 3.305. So the left-hand sum with 10 divisions in this case, is about 3.305. And we'll notice that uh, compared to pi, the actual area, this is about 5.2% too large. So we'll return to this later, but let's, let's try a right-hand sum. We'll increase the number of divisions. We'll take a right-hand sum with 20 divisions. Our common width of each interval is now half as wide as before, so it's 0 0.1. 
And we'll use right hand endpoints. You'll notice here the endpoints start at 0 0.1 and end at 2, being the rightmost right hand endpoint. And we'll find all our function values. We'll take the products, add them all up, and we get 3.028. Notice this time that we're about 3.6% too small. And now finally, let's create a Riemann sum with four divisions. So here we chop up our interval into four equal pieces. The width of each subinterval is now 0 0.5, and we will use the midpoint to sample the function. Our table is much smaller in this case. We take the products, we add up all these contributions, and we get about 3.184. Compared to pi, this is about 1.3% too large. So let's talk about tendencies for left and right hand sums. You could have an increasing function, or you could have a decreasing function. Of course, functions will often switch from being increasing to decreasing, so we're going to restrict our attention to just um, one or the other right now. And we'll notice that a left-hand sum for an increasing function, if you think about it, that, that sum that we see there is clearly smaller than the actual area. And for a decreasing function, a left-hand sum is clearly larger than the area we're trying to approximate. And when we look at the right-hand sum, those roles will be switched. So the upshot is that we will always get underestimates when we use a left-hand sum for increasing functions or a right-hand sum for decreasing functions. I don't think it's worth trying to memorize these, uh, these mottos. It's just you think about the sum you're using and imagine, in the case of an increasing or decreasing function, whether it's going to be uh, an overestimate or an underestimate. But in any case, the overestimates will always occur for right-hand sums with increasing functions and left-hand sums for decreasing functions. Now we've been using pictures where the function values are positive, but these conclusions still hold when the function values are negative. So let's take a look at a picture here where we're using a left-hand sum for an increasing function and a left-hand sum for a decreasing function where the function values are negative. And we'll notice that the way to think about this is this Riemann sum is too negative. And this Riemann sum is not negative enough. And similarly for right-hand sums, this for a decreasing function, this right-hand sum is too negative, and this right-hand sum is not negative enough to approximate the actual value under the curve. So what's going on? We still have underestimates in this left-hand column. Being too negative is being smaller than the actual value. And being not negative enough is being an overestimate for the actual signed area. So it turns out that if you can picture the case for a positive function, your conclusions about whether a method uh, over or underestimates a, a given area still applies when the function value is negative. So let's look at tendencies for midpoint sums. When you have a midpoint sum, you're taking this midpoint sampling the function value. Now, generally, a function is changing its value. It's not constant. And if that's the case, then you would expect on one side for this function value to be too small and the other side to be too large. And very often you would expect that these over and under estimates are going to be very roughly equal, in which case we would notice that uh, compared to left and right hand sums, midpoint sums tend to be self-correcting. They just are uh, innately better able to approximate um, the area uh, under the graph just because each of the contributions tends to carry by itself an over and under estimate. So now um, let's imagine a typical rectangle used in a midpoint sum. So let's imagine that the graph is concave up as it is in this picture, or it appears to be, and we'll isolate this point here and we'll draw a tangent line right here. And well, if we zoom in on this, we'll notice that this overestimate can be swiveled into place here. So we get this trapezoid, we could call it a tangent trapezoid, and it has to have the same area as the original rectangle. But we notice because the graph is concave up in this example, that the area of the tangent trapezoid, and therefore the area on the left of the rectangle is actually smaller than the area we're trying to approximate. 
So when a graph is concave up, a midpoint rule tends to underestimate the actual value of the area. And when a graph is concave down, the midpoint rule tends to overestimate the actual area we're trying to find. So let's look at all of this behavior in the context of our original example. We knew that the area was pi. Now this is a decreasing concave down function. So let's keep that in mind. We have a left-hand sum, and it was too large, which is consistent with the idea that using a left-hand sum with a decreasing function is going to give you an estimate that's too large. Then we had a right-hand sum with 20 divisions. And again, because the function is decreasing, this is a right-hand sum, you would expect this to be too small. Notice, however, by increasing the divisions to 20, we've roughly you know, not quite cut in half the error, but we, we made the error smaller. But now we look at the midpoint sum with four divisions. Now, because it is concave down, we anticipate that this will be too large, which it is. But notice how we only used four subdivisions, only four, and yet our error is only 1.3%. We did far better using one fifth of the number of rectangles as the right hand sum with 20 divisions, our error is less than half the error it was before. So midpoint sums, if you want a quick estimate that's gonna be relatively accurate, midpoint sums are the way to go.